Hey everyone, look at this. I got a hold of a bunch of black rocks from the Dollar Tree. And you know what? We're gonna cut them and see what it looks like, okay? I find a stone and take it home and polish it and hope it shines and also there's a chicken. Hey everyone, this is Clayton. And like I said, I got a bunch of black rocks from the Dollar Tree. Actually, I got a half a bucket full of black rocks from Dollar Tree. And, well, well, what do I do with a half a bucket of black rocks? Yeah, don't ask. But anyway, I got these black rocks, and they've been sitting in that bucket for, oh, at least, at least a year now, and I've been using them. And it, why, I didn't think of it sooner, but it's like, why don't we cut one of those and see what it looks like? Huh. Go figure. I have rocks laying around for a different purpose than cutting. But, yeah, well, here they are. So let's take a look. They're very, well, actually, they're a little bit waxed now, so it makes them a little bit shiny, but they are actually kind of, kind of shiny. And they sort of have a metallic sheen to them. Even if you take that wax coating off, they have this metallic look to them. And I was wondering what in the world these things could be. So, first thing to do when you're trying to figure out what rocks might be is you get the magnet. And I found out that these rocks, yep, they are very magnetic. I mean, that's pretty much as magnetic as you can get. I mean, seriously. So, my first thought was, these might be hematite. And I looked at them more, and I'm like, well, hematite is usually magnetic to itself, and these are not. So, I did some inquiries, meaning I asked one or two people. And since I don't have the stuff to do specific gravity tests and whatnot, I just went the asking route and... Possibly what they are is magnetic basalt. And I was thinking that's probably what they are, just some type of basalt that's magnetic. Because, you know, basalt basalt can be magnetic. Thank you, Jared, from Currently Rock Hounding, for that bit of information. He is a basalt expert, by the way. And he showed me some photos of magnetic basalt that have been cut and I was like you know what that's probably what this stuff is so we're gonna go with that but will it sh will it be shiny will it be a cool shiny rock don't know so the best thing to do is kind of pick one out and cut it so let's these two here this one's sort of drop shaped and this one pretty much oval shaped most of them are nice they've definitely been tumbled or taken from a river that's been tumbling them naturally so i think it's going to be down to these two do we want to do a drop or do we want to do an oval maybe let's go with the oval because it's bigger so off to the side with ye this is going to be our specimen you need to stay out of shot there. So let's take a closer look at this. Why is my lighting not working real well today? Because it doesn't want to, that's why. So if you uh, look at it, there's some like undercutting on this from the tumbling or whatever process they used. And there's not much to it other than being very black and magnetic so the only thing to do take it over to the wheel and see what comes up okay so meet you at the wheel yeah, 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 yeah. oh, oh, oh. <sighs> okay as you'll notice this stone is somewhat shaped and cut already and you know why it's because I was on the other wheel after I brought the phone, this thing, over 
I hit pause and didn't hit start again when I rough shaped it. And when I moved this <laughs> phone over to the next wheel, I realized, oh crap. <sighs> So we're going to pick up here. There was nothing really exciting about the rough shaping. All I did was flatten this back. Well, first I put, define the edge of it, and then flatten the back up and put a rough dome on there. So now I'm going to finish, well, do a little bit of finer polishing on this dome before I decide if I'm going to put it on a dot stick or not. And I, I probably could do this stone without the dot stick, but if you're doing stones like this size, which I have to do sometime, this one sometime here, you can get away with not dopping it. Something like this, you get a much, much better job dopping it. Because you can work that surface much, much better. Boy, that annoys me when I forget to hit the button. Ah. If you've seen the, the roughing in process many, many times, and it really is nothing special, but I could have just restarted the whole video with a different stone. But I don't think it's that important to see the roughing in part that I need to do that. So let's take a look at this. Dry it off a little bit. Okay, I got it fairly nicely done. There's black spots. Is that water spots appearing? No, that's, yeah, that's water spots appearing, but there's actually black spots in there. And you can't really see it when it's not wet. But I think what I'm going to have to do now is just get the stick on there to finish up this, finish up this in the proper way. Oh, that's annoying when I don't hit the record button. I actually did that before with an entire video of the stone and thought I had the record button hit and it it wasn't. Huh. Okay, so now I'm going to take this over to the desk. Shut all this down. Put this on a stick and we will come back and we will finish it off. And I promise this time I will not forget to hit the button. All right? Alrighty, we is dopped, and we are going to continue on this voyage of discovery with this black rock. Okay, I wanted to show you what it looked like dry. It looks very gray. Okie dokie. As you see, I'm using super glue on a dop stick again, as I believe that this stone will take the heat pretty easily. I heated it up to dry it off and it, like it just laughed at the flames. Okay, well, on the, in the segment that I forgot to record, I was talking about why I have a half a bucket full of these black rocks. You know, and it's why I didn't bother you know, looking at them to cut beforehand, and I was like, well, I bought them at the Dollar Tree, a dollar a bag. I had been toughening up my hand to do spear fingers, which is a strike like this, because eventually I want to break some boards with that. It's not the, like, most useful martial art technique, but I still want to be able to do it. But to toughen your hands up, start out with a bucket full of rice, and you keep smacking it into it with your fingers this way, and then gripping the rice and moving your fingers around in it. Right, rice hand conditioning is very interesting. Look it up. I've tried it. It works exceptionally well. Rock climbers use it. But you can also toughen your fingers up for the spear finger with it. Well, after about six months, might have been about eight months of that. The rice was not cutting it anymore for the spear finger toughening, so I moved on. I was going to go on to beans, but the beans weren't actually hard enough. They were not even as 
tough as the rice. And so I thought, it's all these rocks at the Dollar Tree, and I'm like, those are perfect, they're nice and smooth, they're about the right size. Yeah, so I got a whole bucket full of those to do conditioning with. And never, never even thought, hey, I wonder what those look like cut. Yeah, that's something when you buy some one thing for a certain purpose and then don't transfer it or think about using it for something else, you know. You get in that rut sometimes. Okay, this seems to be doming off pretty nicely. Okay, I'll take a quick look. Yes, that's booming up very nicely, and it's very sort of getting gray now. You can see some black spots in there, apart from the water spots. Like, there's water spots. There's some really faint black spots in there. Are oh, you missed the black spot. Oh, and got another email from Mrs. Cluck again. And this time... Yeah, it took me a minute for that one, too, but apparently she's bungee jumping at the Yangtze River in China. I've never even been bungee jumping, <clears throat> let alone China. Had plans to go there once. Didn't work out. Would have liked to have gone. But Mrs. Clock's there, and she's enjoying herself. Bungee jumping, though. Good grief. Hey, you never know. Okay, yeah. This is actually coming along rather swiftly. This video should be pretty quick too, especially with the first 10 minutes not there. Ticks me off when I do that. Okay, take a look. Focus, focus. There. Oh, there you can see the black spots a little bit. You can see them right around that. Yeah, maybe you can. Let's see how it looks and what dried. Oh, guys. Yeah, it seems like the faceting's pretty much out. Give it one little quickie yet, and then we'll move on to the next wheel. All right, let's kill the water here. And over to the noisier wheel of noisierness. That seems to be pretty good. Ugh. Nope, still haven't fixed the valve. And I'm soon gonna have to because it's there. It is. <clears throat> I sort of hope these st this stone doesn't turn out really good because then I'll want to cut all the stones in the bucket and I need them to smack my fingers into. Like I said before, I thought these might be hematite, but I I don't think so. Maybe when they're polished, maybe in this one's polished, we'll be able to tell if it looks more like hematite. But I'm going for just some kind of basic basalt that's magnetic. Because I can't imagine buying a big bag of rough hematite for a dollar. Focus. Wow, that's coming along pretty nice. Still a little bit of faceting in there. I'm going to have to work that out slightly. <clears throat> More faceting in there than I want, let's put it that way. Cerium oxide would probably take all that out now, but I like to do a better job. Even if it is a random stone that you use to smack your fingers into. Focus. Okie dokie, I think. Yes, that's well enough. Definitely well enough. Okay. So now we're down to here. Oh, jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. Yes, and the turtle is still here. 
Don't take long on this wheel whatsoever. So stand by for a birth of a shiny, hopefully. Hopefully, I say. Focus. Wow. Okay, that's coming pretty nice. That's got some shine to it right there as it is. Wow. Alrighty, I think we are definitely ready for cerium oxide. So, when I see you next, I will be over there at the desk with a shiny. So, stay tuned! And we're back. Took it off the stick. And look at this. See if we can get some light on there properly. Yeah, that's better. Look at that. Let me zoom in on it. It's very, very black. <laughs> and it's got a nice satiny sheen to it. Let's see how... Yeah, well, that looks fairly good. But man, and... You know, there's very little... There's not really any undercutting in the darn thing, either. It's just quite... Quite a shiny black stone. It has that metallic sheen to it. I do not think, um, almost, I'm certain now it's not hematite, even though magnetic. So it's most likely we got this year a Jared special, you know, magnetic basalt. But whatever it is, this stone is definitely a win. So if you like the video, you know, hit that button, subscribe, uh, and subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, and then you'll know when I'm doing all this kind of stuff, all right? There's nothing like knowing. And I will be back with more videos, with more odd, weird rocks, or nicer rocks, or who knows what rocks. So thanks for spending some time with me, and have a good evening.